Hi. I'd like to talk a little bit about what kind of person I am. And this isn't because my favorite person in the world is me. It's not that I'm trying to bring adulation or attention or love to myself. It's because I've spent my life being misunderstood. And so I want to make clear why I do the things I do. And this will be instrumental in facilitating an understanding of me on the part of people to whom it probably matters. People I live with, people I have family with, people I'm friends with, and people I work with. This will be easy to understand because I'm going to reference who I am through my Facebook activity, which many of you have seen. It will involve telling you a little bit about my life, but mostly it will be an honest assessment of myself, which I encourage you all to make about yourselves without any sense of guilt. It's okay for us to shore up our shortcomings and mention what we think are deficiencies, but it's also okay to say where you think you're doing good. Because you know that where you're doing that, it comes from intrinsic, visceral, and cognitive, intellectual, and spiritual interests. And you know when it's true. And there's nothing wrong with the truth. Even if sometimes it happens to be congr congratulatory toward ourselves. Because sometimes it's necessary to confess where those things come from. So people don't think that you're just trying to shore up attention. Okay, so... Straight to the point, I get blamed by certain people for being on Facebook too much. Right off the bat, I'm going to explain to you why I'm on Facebook so much. And if you don't understand it, then you will need a better understanding of the world, the human psyche, and how, how things work, especially in the arts and in journalism and politics. But first, I guess I should explain my interests. If the world didn't have so much injustice in it, so much violence, so much dishonesty, so much ignorance and so much pain, I probably would only be showing you my photographs and poetry on Facebook. So that should tell you a little bit about where my real visceral interests are. My real visceral interests are in contemplating and observing the universe from minutia to magnificence in grandeur and size, and then expressing my feelings about it, whether it's flowers along the path or galaxies orbiting our own or the beauty in someone's eyes, or the magnificence of nature, I'd rather be expressing myself about those things, both intellectually and artistically, in poems, essays, and photographs. That's what I'd rather be doing. All of my political writing on Facebook, which those of you who are educated enough to notice, is actually not that well researched, but which is usually not very far from being accurate, is only there because I love life I'm amazed at the magnificence of, there's a word that's being used too much, of sentience. And I love all beings, all species, all people. And so I feel that I need to share my concern about those things in the face of war, hunger, poverty, uh, injustice, right-wing politics, the destruction of the environment. And so that's why the bulk of what you see on Facebook is political. It isn't because I like politics. No normal person likes politics. They may be in love with the process of it, but hopefully it's not because of an amassing of power. It's because they believe or they think that it's true that their work is contributing to, to the common good. That's why I'm on Facebook. That's why I repost things. I don't even really want to repost anything on my page. I'm such a fastidious person when it comes to design and decorum and the layout of things, that I wish I didn't have to repost things on my Facebook, which causes a visual color change every, every second, a style change every second, a mood change every second when you go down the feed. Yeah, I actually think about those things. I'm the kind of guy, and you could ask my parents and my family, who used to rearrange his bedroom every couple of months when I was a kid because I was always thinking of a more ergonomic and aesthetically pleasing uh, design in which to live. Okay, and so if it were up to me, my Facebook would be self-designed, it would be white probably, there would be a little header up top with a logo, and then there would be links to things for your interest. That's the way I run my website. Go to carlatanisi.com. But Facebook is what it is, and despite the fact that I learned very good things about Mark Zuckerberg recently, I usually haven't appreciated him very much, and so I don't even like or haven't liked 
paying homage to him and making his pockets fuller by posting on Facebook, which I think is disastrously ugly. Uh, it, it doesn't measure up an iota next to Cacao Story or Line or these other phone-based uh, uh, social networking systems, but I use it because it is the best one out there for staying in touch with the people I've made friends with over the years, some of whom are extremely illustrious, uh, not to say that that's better than the friends who are just gold because I've known them for so long and they're good people. Um, and so it's an, it's an indispensable tool and I use it mostly politically. It's why I have 25 to 30 pages that I use as clearing houses to collect information and activist uh, oriented posts and sentimental posts to change people's minds about species rights and human rights and the environment and common sense reason, and atheism, and the ills of religion, and philosophy. It's because my whole existence, and this is the point, is about the betterment of the human and sentient condition. That is who I am. I have deficiencies in many areas of my life, especially if you compare me to the insanity of society and what most people think is normal, you know, going to college, getting a degree, getting a job, getting married, getting a house and getting a mortgage, all that stuff, which I'm actually free of and sometimes get blamed for, which I think makes me smart, not stupid or deficient. But I have so many deficiencies. I have so many areas that I couldn't be happy in because I just didn't possess the faculties or I didn't know how to run in the rat race well enough that I think it's okay for me to put a feather in my cap to explain to you what I am about and then you'll understand why I'm on Facebook and why I do the things that I do. I love life. I love the magnificence of how evolution has given us this universe and life in it. I love humor. I love beauty, which I think is in everything, even the ugliest person, because beauty has nothing to do with physical structure. That's just a consequence of our own um, subjectivism. I love goodness, I love virtue, I love reason, I love the fact that although I'm not an Einstein, I was given enough ability to be uh, extemporaneously blessed with words, that I can write a poem and an essay, and I can talk about issues from an intelligent point of view, if I may say so myself. These are the things that make me happy. People say to me all the time, oh, why are you wasting your time on Facebook? It isn't going to get you anywhere. As if that's the only reason to do anything. When I die... My legacy will not have been in money. It will be in how I have touched people's hearts, hopefully. How I have changed people's minds, hopefully. How I have motivated people to believe in themselves. Or to take a step up politically to improve the world. These are the things I'm doing. I'm creating my legacy. I've also been attacked unfairly and I've lost jobs and relationships because of the deficiencies in other people which are not in the areas where I, where I excel. And so I've been the victim of xenophobia. I've been the victim of uh, religious intolerance. I've been the victim of political correctness, okay? And these things have gouged craters in my heart. And I deal with it by fighting the injustice of the perpetuation of stupidity, ignorance, bad religion. That's how I make myself happy. That's how I look in the mirror and feel like a man because I fight what I think is wrong. Not with my fists, not with insulting words very often, although I do it sometimes because we live in the most dangerous time ever in the history of the United States, but with sentiment and feeling and reason. This is who I am. When somebody says to me, stay up Facebook, they're basically telling me, stop using the most resourceful tool to talk to common people and friends that there is as a writer. Why would I do that? I'm not going to go out and get a job at the New Yorker magazine tomorrow. It's not going to happen. Okay, I didn't have the right friends. I didn't finish school. Uh, and I'm not young enough. Tomorrow, if I graduated Harvard, I wouldn't get the jobs that 20-year-olds can get after graduating from CUNY. It's not going to happen. So the way that I make myself relevant is I use this marvelous tool, the Internet, to interact with people all over the planet. It's why Yoko Ono follows me on, on Twitter and other illustrious people such as psychologists, psychotherapists, doctors. It's why I'm friends with engineers and journalists and astronauts. 
okay? And I think very carefully before I put stuff up, and I worry every time that I may lose some of those illustrious friends because I do feel so viscerally about what's wrong with the world, and I do sometimes use colorful language. But what you're never going to find here is a lack of integrity, a lack of honesty, a lack of foresight into what's right. These are my talents as a human being.